Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ. Thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you're really gonna like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Over the past couple of months, there's been a lot of fear in the market and a lot of talk about the coronavirus. Now the coronavirus, from what we know, it started in Wuhan, China. And it is spreading rapidly, not only within China, but also spreading outside of China. And because of the coronavirus and this being potentially a big pandemic across the globe, once you combine that with the fact that the stock market is at an all time high, you can see why there has been a lot of fear and a lot of selling over the course of the last couple of weeks. And so you can imagine there's a lot of people either Googling questions about what should I do with the money that I have? Should I invest more money into the market? You know, how should I react to the fact that the market is quote unquote tanking at the moment? And generally you shouldn't worry about day to day what's going on in the market if you're investing for the long term and that is your strategy and you have purchases that you're making on a weekly, bi-weekly, or maybe a monthly basis, then you shouldn't change your strategy based on something that's happening within the market within a couple of days or maybe over the course of a week. However, when there are big market corrections or big drops in the market, like a 10% drop that we had in the last week of February, then these could be opportunities for you to actually buy more into the strategies, whether it's an index fund or an individual stock, at those times, especially if you plan to continue to buy shares of that company. So if you compared it to maybe an item that you wanted to purchase, let's use an iPhone as an example. If you were looking to purchase an iPhone or maybe you were saving money up to buy an iPhone, and then all of a sudden, over the course of a week, the price of that iPhone drops by 10% or maybe even 20%. Now, if you were saving and planning on purchasing that iPhone anyway, would you now decide that you're not gonna purchase it because the price dropped all of a sudden? Or would you decide because of this big price drop that comes once every maybe seven to 10 years that maybe now is the time that you should actually buy? And if you happen to have cash hanging around that you plan to invest in the market, this may be a good time for you to add more money to whatever strategy that you have and me personally, that's investing in index funds. So on the last business day of February, I did decide to add a little bit more money to my index fund, or at least in my personal accounts, because over the course of the last week of February, there was an over 10% drop in the market. And while the market could continue to drop over the course of the next week or the next couple of months, especially with the fear of coronavirus and how that is affecting many companies' ability to do business, and people's fear of going out into the public and possibly interacting with people who may have the virus and may not know it, that's gonna affect a lot of the earnings of many businesses, thus affecting how much people value those companies in the stock market. However, we do know that over the long term, unless you're planning to retire sometime soon, if you're not gonna retire within the next 10 years and you're gonna be investing for five, 10, 20, maybe even 30 years, then buying more into this sudden drop in the market would be the smart thing for you to do. So one strategy that you could use to determine whether or not you would like to buy more into an S&P 500 or maybe a total stock market index fund would be to base it based on the dividend percentage or the dividend yield that you're receiving when you make that purchase. And so one of the determinants that I use if I decide that I'm gonna buy more into the index fund versus just only using the automated purchases that I have every month is based on the dividend yield. So if the S&P 500 or the total stock market index fund, if the dividend yield is over 2%, that's when I decide to make more purchases into that index fund. So as an example, the S&P 500 index fund pays a dividend of about $1.43 every quarter. That dividend over the course of the year is $5.71 once you count four quarters within the year. So at the height of the market, when the S&P 500, ticker symbol VOO, Vanguard's version of the S&P 500 index fund, was at its highest mark, that index fund was $311 per share. 
So once you divide the amount of dividends that you would receive, which is $5.71 over the course of the year, and you divide that by the highest price of the S&P 500 index fund this year, which was $311, the dividend yield that you had at that time was 1.8%. So what you can do to calculate the price that the S&P 500 index fund would have to drop to in order for the dividend yield to now be 2% or higher would be to divide that $5.71 by 0 0.02. And the number you get is 285. So the S&P 500 index fund would have to drop to at least $285 from its $311 mark in order for the dividend yield to be above 2%. And over the course of last week, the S&P 500 index fund actually dropped down to $262 over the last week of February. So at that point in time, its dividend yield was 2.18%. So once it dropped down below $285, anything below that would mean you're increasingly getting a higher dividend yield for the amount of shares that you purchase below that price. So once that happened, I did decide on the last day of February that I would add a little bit more money into the S&P 500 index fund, as well as the total stock market index fund, since the dividend yield has increased to above 2%. And at the time of recording this video, the S&P 500, even a couple of days after I made that purchase, it is still below $285 for that index fund. Now, this is just my strategy of when I'll decide that I will go outside of my normal automated purchases to buy more of the S&P 500 index fund or the Vanguard total stock market index fund, because I think that's a great point based on what interest rates are currently. So if you did have cash on hand, you're probably not getting 2% interest rate at most banks. And even with some of the high yield savings accounts, it is now below 2% with their interest rate. So if I'm holding on to a large amount of cash that I can afford to now invest into the market and it's not a part of my emergency fund, then the best bet for me would be to take advantage of the drop in the market where I'm getting the same about 2% yield, whether it's a dividend or it's interest on a savings account, knowing that over time, the money that I have in the S&P 500 or in the stock market as a whole will gain more than it would if I only had it being held in my savings account. So not only am I getting the growth of the stock market by investing in the S&P 500 index fund or the total stock market index fund, I'm also getting a dividend yield of 2%, which is actually better than current interest rates. So as Warren Buffett has mentioned in the past, when others are panicking and there's fear in the market, that is typically the best time to buy because you're buying great businesses or you're buying the American economy as a whole by buying the total stock market index fund or the S&P 500 index fund, and you're getting it at a discount. And we all love discounts. So for those who have asked, that is my strategy on deciding when I would actually decide to put extra money into my index funds whenever there is a big drop in the market. But as you know, no one can really time the market. The stock market could drop even lower because 10% is actually not a significant amount. When you look at past recessions, when there are 20% or greater drop in the market. But that would be a good rule of thumb if you do want to add more money into the market. Look for the total stock market or the S&P 500 index fund, and if their dividend yield is higher than current interest rates that you can get with a savings account, then that would be a good time to invest more money into those index funds. All right, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate that. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.